Hello and welcome to the video. This is my annual update about flight controller comparison. I've made one of these for the last couple of years and it's about time I did an update. The hobby moves so quick that these kind of videos become outdated very quickly indeed. So I'm going to focus on some of the things that I look for in flight controllers when I'm choosing them to help you make a decent choice. If you go and have a look back at the original two videos, the things I talked about in the very first video that I ever did doing a flight controller comparison was very different because back when I did that first video there were lots of common flight controllers and each of the flight controllers had one maybe two versions of software that were available for them and it was a transitory period where a lot of the older technology like multi-wii cc3d the kk 2.x boards were all kind of coming to their end of life and things like the nazi 32 was starting to slow down as well but the new f3 based flight controllers really started to kick off Last year, when I did my update, I focused an awful lot more about looking at the software that runs on these flight controllers, because that's a huge part of what you need to consider when you're looking at the flight controllers, i.e. how you want to fly the model that you're going to eventually build. And this time I'm going to look at that in a little bit more detail. Now this isn't meant to cover every single flight controller available. It's not going to cover every single flight controller software version available. I'm going to go through the ones that are most common as this video is really aimed at those of you that are relatively new to the hobby or looking for the next flight controller for the next build. So let's first of all talk about the different flight controller softwares that you're going to bump into more often than not. I'll talk a little bit about the stuff on the right hand side, which is stuff that I'm not going to cover as in depth in here. But let's spend a bit of time at the beginning just talking about Betaflight, Cleanflight, iNavFlight and others. So beta flight at the top is the one you're going to bump in most if you're into the multi-rotor hobby. Lots and lots of YouTube channels spend lots and lots of time talking about the latest and greatest features of beta flight. And beta flight 3.3 and later is very easy to set up and the tuning of it is an awful lot easier. In fact, I've had a number of quadcopters that have been running earlier versions of beta flight, upgraded them to 3.3 or later and found that they flew so much nicer straight out of the box with a default PID tune. Now, the great thing with beta flight is it is fabulous for things like acrobatics, racing, acro flying and there's lots of innovation happening all the time. Beta flight actually came from the next thing on our list which was clean flight. Now clean flight has been slowing down an awful lot in terms of a project it seems to have almost died a death which is a real shame because clean flight was a fantastic project that took another version of the code something called base flight I'll put a link in the description if you want to know about how open source software works and why all these things are all related. But CleanFlight was the predecessor to BetaFlight and uh, these things tend to come in and out of vogue. And most people these days won't be using CleanFlight. The vast majority of people, including myself, pretty much moved 100% away onto BetaFlight now. INAV Flight is a little bit different. INAV Flight is another cousin of both Beta Flight and Clean Flight, but INAV Flight has spent an awful lot of time focusing on expanding two specific parts of the support in the code. The first one is support for GPS. So if you want to fly uh, GPS missions, have basic return to home and fail safe features, INAV is fantastic for that. INAV is also blooming brilliant if you're looking at fixed wing too. Whereas things like beta flight and clean flight have very cursory support for wings and fixed wing kind of craft, the INAV team have put a huge amount of effort into INAV flight to make sure that it flies planes very well. In fact, an awful lot of my wings and FPV explorers have INAV on there so that in the event of a problem, I know it's going to fly back to me. Ardu Pilot is what iNav will be in a couple of years' time. The Ardu Pilot family, there's Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane, Ardu Rover, Ardu Sub. So you can pretty much use it on anything. It's been around for ages, originally heavily supported by 3DR. Uh, so it's an, kind of an open source project, but it has had shed loads of money poured into it. And at one point it had, I think, about the best part of a dozen full-time developers working on it. It has had thousands and thousands and thousands of craft probably hundreds of thousands of flight hours run through it and it's pretty bulletproof 
it gives super smooth flight on planes, multi-rotors, cars, boats, and even submarines. But until recently, you had to be running something like a Pixhawk or one of the Elder APMs to run one of the Ardu Pilot family. Last one to talk about then in the main ones is the KISS flight control software. It only runs on the KISS flight control technology. It's a piece of cake to set up. I'm a big fan of it. It works really well. Again, really designed predominantly for multi-rotors, but have other things in there too. So those are the five that I'm going to talk about more in a minute. Let's very quickly cover the stuff on the right hand side. For those of you that have been with my channel for a very long time, you'll remember the MultiWii days. MultiWii were early Arduino based flight controllers running Arduino code, originally modified versions of the Nintendo Wii controller to feel the acceleration and gyroscopic forces that were needed to fly the craft. That got quite sophisticated, but the MultiWii code eventually became Base Flight, which became Clean Flight, which became Beta Flight. So it's several versions out of date. The multi-wee flight controllers are still knocking around and multi-wee kind of still works if you want to do it. The GPS code in the multi-wee stuff is actually pretty good and the iNav stuff has kind of got back to where it was in multi-wee, completely rewriting all the code using modern up-to-date programming methods. There's uh, lots of other flights, so you've heard of things like race flight, butterfly, those as well. Again, those are closely related to beta flight and clean flight. So the chances are if beta flight will run on it, things like butterfly and race flight will as well. I'm not going to cover those in here. They all have their own particular niches and they are to beta flight what beta flight was originally to clean flight, i.e. another platform with particular areas of interest and innovation. A couple of other things, Libra Pilot and D-Ronin, these were running on the CC3D flight controllers. Again, I had loads of videos on those back in the day. CC3D is really not something I'd recommend. Again, we'll talk about hardware in a minute. But that sadly is really the end of line for those, in my opinion. And back in the day, Open Pilot, which was the predecessor to Libre Pilot, had a fantastic setup wizard. And with the hardware and the ease of setup, it was the thing that I'd recommend new pilots went to. But that's not been the case for probably a good two years now. There's also things like the Eagle Tree Vector. I've got a complete series on the Eagle Tree Vector. That's a fab system. Uh, go and have a look at that one if you're interested in the Eagle Tree Vector. It's quite expensive, but it does most of the things that Ardu Pilot does, but it's a little bit easier to set up for some stuff. So now we've talked about that, let's actually talk about flight controllers. So if we talk about what flight controllers you can be looking at, and again, we'll get into specifics in a minute. If I'm looking at beta flight, clean flight, or iNav, today I'm looking at an F4 or F7 based flight controller. The F4 and F7 is referring to the CPU or the processor, and the higher the number, the more processing power that it has, and the more code that it can run. They usually have more memory and more of everything really so the more modern boards are usually the f4 f7 based ones so if you're looking at beta flight clean flight or inav i'd be looking now at an f4 or going through the year probably towards the back end of the year i'll be starting to make builds with f7 based boards if you're looking at an ardu pilot again that could be in a plane it could be in a multi-rotor a car a boat a sub pretty much anything then if you're going to go for the best i'd be using a pixhawk 2.1 Again, have a series on Pixhawk 2.1 so you can go and see what that is all about. That again is a very expensive flight controller with some very, very smart features. And it's not something you buy and put in every model, but there are some that you'd really you want it for. Stuff that will work fine. Uh, F3 based flight controllers, both Beta Flight, Clean Flight, and INAV work great. I'll talk about some of the specific ones I use in a moment. Uh, the standard Pixhawk stuff is very good. In fact, I've just started looking at the Pixhawk 4 from Hollybro. That's one of the latest iterations of that technology. It's pretty bulletproof, this stuff now. And if you want a model that's going to have things like gimbals on it, and you want super smooth, really clean video, and you also want to be able to program missions for maybe surveying or mapping, those kind of things, Pixhawk is a great choice. Things that I wouldn't recommend now are for beta flight, clean flight, and iNav. They've pretty much all ended support for F1-based flight controllers. That's things like the original NASI32, the CC3Ds. Uh, there are lots of them still knocking about. I get loads of questions about setting up NASI32 and CC3D. But if you're watching this, I wouldn't recommend using them at all now. I'd go for an F3 or ideally an F4-based flight controller if you're looking at beta flight, clean flight, or iNav. 
There's a lot of APM stuff kicking around as well. APM was the old 8-bit version of the Pixhawk, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, the APM support finished a couple of years ago. And again, it still kind of works if you use the old version of the software, but I wouldn't recommend it. Interestingly, Pilot is starting to be ported to F3 and F4 base flight controllers that you would normally run Beta Flight, Clean Flight and INAV on. So that is going to become more of a choice as we go through the second half of this year. And that's an interesting thing. So now hopefully you can see why actually the hardware is becoming less of a thing because one board could potentially run Beta Flight, Clean Flight, INAV Flight or an Pilot version without any problems at all. So what do I use? Let's look at the top level and what I'd recommend. So for beta flight, I like things like the CL Racing F4S. The latest version is very good. Uh, the older version, there's one version in particular that had a bit of a weird problem with some bullet ESCs. Uh, that's now been resolved. I've done a couple of builds with those. Check out the Armatan videos where I've put those together. It's a really beautiful flight controller that has all the pads in the right places and is a piece of cake to set up and fly well. The Hollybro Kakute is one that I've used in lots of builds as well. It comes with lots of daughter boards and things that you can plug in, and it has a vibration isolated IMU. The Kakute is one of those flight controllers that if I'm not sure, I'll stick it in pretty much anything. And so far, touch wood, it's given me a great experience. The Kakute was at the heart of the Hollybro Coppice 1 ready to fly quad that I looked at quite a while ago, and I just completely ripped off that whole idea and put one of exactly the same setup inside the Bolt RC build that I did. And I've also popped it in one of the latest builds, the quad building for beginners series that I've just done as well. And every time I build on one of these, it just works. So it's a nice option. The Brain FPV Radix is another choice that I go to an awful lot. The Radix is a little bit different. Uh, I did a video series on the Brain FPV uh, RE1, which is the predecessor to the Radix. Brain FPV do something a little bit weird with their flight controllers. It actually has two processors on board, one to run the flight control software, and the other one produces a vector-based on-screen display that's completely different from all the other beta flight flight controllers that you're going to find. So those are the three at the moment that I'm going to do a build. They're the ones that I try and get my hands on to put in the heart of whatever model I'm trying out. If I'm looking at INAV flight, the choices are a little bit different. I like the Omnibus F4 all-in-one and Pro flight controllers. They're really inexpensive now. They're kind of, you know, £20, $20 each. Loads and loads of features. Uh, come in lots of different form factors, so you can get one that will pretty much suit you. The majority of the INAV builds these days are done on the Omnibus F4 boards, so it's a good choice and there's lots of support for INAV flight in the community as well. I also did a build recently with the Furious FPV F35. Uh, that worked really well. Uh, that was the first one that I looked at, a flight controller that's specifically built around fixed wing. And because of that, had some very different design decisions compared to the other flight controllers that we've already talked about. And I've also done a video where I talked about the Matek F405 wing, which is a great flight controller, which is like the F35 from Furious FPV on steroids. It can do pretty much everything. It's a little bit bigger than a standard flight controller, but blimey, it has everything on there that you're ever going to need and more UARTs and ports that you can shake a stick at. So even if you're going to do some pretty fancy stuff with telemetry, GPSs, air sensors, Bluetooth, smart port telemetry back to radio, if you can just keep connecting stuff onto the Matek F405 wing because there's still ports to use. If I want to use Ardu Pilot, then there are two things. I'd have to go for a Pixhawk 2.1 uh, if it's a really, really big craft that I want to be careful with. Or these days, I'd probably now go for the Pixhawk 4. The Pixhawk 4 is that new flight controller from Hollybro. It's the latest and greatest version of the Pixhawk technology. It has a lot more memory, a lot more ports than the original Pixhawk versions that are kicking around. And it has some other quite cute tricks up its sleeve as well with the way it connects to the power distribution board and where the PWM and everything plugs in. So what software would I run for each application? So what are the things that make me pick beta flight over clean flight over INAV over something like Ardu Pilot. Well, the cool thing is, is that all of these now have pretty wide board support. So check the wiki pages for which flight controllers are supported by which, but you could potentially buy a flight controller now that will run all of them. If you're gonna, if you're really into acrobatic flight and you like flipping and racing, then beta flight is going to be the one that I would choose first, although clean flight and INAV can support it as well. 
If you're looking at GPS modes, then it has to be INAV flight or Ardu pilot. The beta flight development team don't care about GPS. There's very limited support in there that will just about give you the latitude and longitude in your telemetry and your on-screen display. But in terms of having robust GPS code in there, that's not a priority for them. It's all about racing. So if you are F3 or F4 based flight controllers, go for iNav. If you have a Pixhawk or something like that, then go for Ardu Pilot or vice versa. The last one to think about is what's got lots of redundancy. If you want uh, it so that you can have multiple power supplies in the event of a failure and all kinds of things like that, for me, it's got to be one of the Ardu Pilots. So Ardu Plane, Ardu Copter, Ardu Rover or anything like that. The systems on there have been designed with an awful lot of fail safe and redundancy. And the hardware, things like the Pixhawk now, have multiple inputs for the power supply. So you can power it off several things at once. So even if one of the power lines completely goes down because of a fault on the aircraft, the flight controller will continue to work. Last thing to comment on the right hand side is again, all of this stuff supports multi rotors. Uh, beta flight and clean flight support fixed wing, but it's basic support in my humble opinion. INAV flight is really good at fixed wing. It has an awful lot of stuff, including a different version of the PID controllers that you'll hear about in videos. It has a PIFF or proportional integral and feed forward. That's a far better way to control the surfaces on a physical wing. And then Ardu Pilot will do just about everything. With the different versions, there's not much that you can build that you couldn't automate and make an autonomous vehicle out of if you're going to use a Pixhawk and Ardu Pilot. So in summary, what would I use uh, when I'm building a craft? If it's going to be a general purpose multi-rotor, I will go with beta flight all the time. Don't forget there's things like that butterfly and stuff that's had a lot of love recently, but I just like to stick to beta flight. It does a great job, it works really well, and I don't bump into the problems that other people do using some of the more exotic software, but that's absolutely still a choice. For fixed wing and GPS modes on quads, I always use not INAV flight. Uh, it's really cheap because you're using those industry standard components that are about $20 for a flight controller and about $20 for the GPS as well. And you get those two bits and with the rest of the stuff that you normally have, you have a GPS capable craft. For models where I want a super smooth flight and the best chance of getting it back if something goes wrong, I would normally go for a Pixhook with Ardu Pilot. Again, if it's a car, boat, submarine or something else that isn't a multi-rotor or a plane, then you're really looking at Ardu Pilot because that's the only choice from the list that we've looked at. And the last comment I'll make is the Eagle Tree Vector is also, even though we haven't discussed it a lot in here, go and have a look at the video series. It's very good for planes and multi-rotor support. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in flight controllers. We've talked about the different flight controller software, what they are, how they work, which ones I'd use in which situation. We've talked about the different iterations of the different technology families and which ones are better, which ones are best and which ones I'd stay away from. And at the end, I've kind of gone through the stuff that I would personally choose right now. Again, when I do this in another 12 months, I'll probably have a different set of slides. They're evolving and tweaking all the time, but hopefully that will help those of you that are interested in the topic. My last tip would be, if you're not sure of what you could use for your build, have a look in the build series, particularly the latest ones on the channel, because I always take a lot of time particularly choosing the flight controllers and ESCs on my bills to try and make sure that I get to the far side and they work beautifully. So there's a good chance that if a flight controller is being used in a build series on my channel, it's probably going to be pretty bulletproof. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlists, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.